Hey Waffle Gang, I do hope you're well. My name is Mark and today we're checking out some more relationship stories. And if you do love a Reddit story, why not consider hitting that like, subscribe, maybe that notification bell too. Well, let's crack on with today's first story, which comes from Am I the Arsehole Wedding Dress CU and says, Am I the Arsehole for cutting up and altering my wedding dress into a functional dress instead of giving it to my sister who can't afford it? I need an unbiased opinion on this because I don't know if I was the arsehole. For a way because I'm active in other communities and I don't want this to mix. So I was supposed to get married two months ago to my ex-partner of five years. Sadly we broke it off because he cheated on me on his bachelor party with a stripper. I had this beautiful dress that cost me around $2,000 out of my pocket and I had been very depressed since everything happened because I felt it was somehow my fault for not being sexy enough or not giving him what he wanted. So last weekend, I decided to take my power back and I began altering the dress. I've been sewing for 15 plus years, so I know what I'm doing. I cut it a bit, changed the color to something less weddingy, and after a week of work, I had a beautiful gown that I could use for more stuff. The problem comes now. I uploaded that picture of the dress to Instagram with a caption that said something along the lines of, you can change the worst memories or some shit like that. My sister hits me up and asks me if that was my old wedding dress and I told her yes. She then called me and asked me why I had done this. I asked her why is it such a big deal and she told me that I could have waited till after her wedding. I was so confused. Then she reminded me that when we were staying at the hotel where my wedding was supposed to happen, my mum and sister were there cheering me up and my sister said something along the lines of, Oh well, if you're not using it, I will. We all laughed, so I thought it was a joke because it was never brought up again after. She just asked me once what material it was, so I just assumed she wanted something similar. Now my sister is mad at me, and my mum says she understands our points of views, but that I could have waited five more months till after her wedding to take my power back. Am I the arsehole? Edit, yes, he fucked the stripper. Please stop asking me. Edit two, what the fuck is wrong with some of you? Suddenly I'm the asshole for leaving my ex for cheating on me because it doesn't count because it was his bachelor party. You know how relationships work. Are you also going to tell me that if he cheated on a Saturday it wouldn't count? Or if he left the country? This is hilarious coming from a sub that says cheaters are the worst people in this world. Cheating is cheating, period. Oh god, there's some of those comments in there. And we'll start off with Great White North Extra who says no one's an asshole here. Your sister may have been planning to wear your dress, but realistically, with only five months to go before a wedding, I would have mentioned it before now. Would she have to try on the dress and perhaps make alterations? At the very least, she should have confirmed the loaning of the dress. She cannot be mad at you when there was an onus on her to confirm the arrangements. Genesis Protex says no one's an arsehole here. Clearly, there was a communication misunderstanding here. It sucks, but I don't think anybody is in the wrong here. Just explain you thought it was a joke at the time with everything going on and you're sorry for the mistake in understanding. International aside says no one's an asshole here. She should have been more clear in her wishes if she was serious about wanting to wear it. Even then, it would be at your own discretion as to what you did with it. Went through an arduous ordeal and if it would have been more therapeutic to refashion the dress rather than see your sister walk down the aisle in the dress you were going to wear before finding out what an asshole your fiancé was, that would have been your prerogative. I hesitate to call an asshole for being disappointed, but if she can't get over it after hearing your reasoning, then she'd be the asshole for being entitled. And there was a lot of not the asshole comments, and you know, I can understand where some of them were coming from, but at the same time, some of it in the story did make me feel very, very uneasy. But being mad at you after this one comment, oh well, if you're not using it, I will, after they were trying to cheer you up, it just seems really insensitive to me. She's expecting to wear your wedding dress at her wedding, which I'm assuming you will be attending, and it's going to bring up negative memories for you. And for her to not consider that, to talk about it, to come up to you and say, you know, would you be comfortable with me wearing that dress at my wedding? Because I know it has negative connotations for you or, or something along those lines. Just having that conversation, not to do that, but instead to be mad at you just doesn't sit right with me. But Renzi face says not the arsehole, wear the dress proudly you fabric whisperer. <laughs> it always low-key blows my mind when family members assume that blood has the same purchasing power as cash and slash or skill. 
Nah, Becky. I made this happen with my money, but then I made it happen again with my hands. Shoo shoo. <laughs> Miley says, My mum lost her shit when I told her I threw out my dress a couple of years after the wedding. I bought it with my own money, and my husband and I did a big cake smash into each other's faces and had a massive blue stain down the front that I wasn't going to come out with any type of Pinterest crystal slash essential oils magic. <laughs> It sat in the closet for a couple of years and my dog had ripped open the dress bag and pulled my train out for a bed. Best use, in my honest opinion. Wicked Kitty Litter says, not the arsehole, you bought the dress and can do whatever you want with it. She's nuts to think that you would remember her comment of using the dress when you'd just gone through a horrible emotional situation. Plus, her saying that and reminding you that she was getting married when your engagement had just ended was cruel. By the way, did she offer to pay you for the dress, or did she just expect to use it for free? Sounds like she might be a mooch. So, OP did update the post. Let's find out what happens. I posted approximately five months ago about my sister being mad at me not giving her what was supposed to be my wedding dress. So after being assured that I did nothing wrong, I decided to try to talk it out with my sister. So I tried calling her, but she had blocked my number. I was very confused and talked to my mother. She was trying to still stay out of it and I got a little mad and said that it was not fair. And my sister was not right because she never formally asked me and how was I supposed to just guess that she wanted it? She tried to justify her but in the end also accepted that my sister was wrong. Nonetheless, she told me to just give her space and that she would come to terms with it herself. I waited a few days till I met her in the supermarket. At first, she tried to act like she didn't see me but I planted myself in front of her. She was just rolling her eyes saying she had places to be and i just said you know i hope you notice how unfair you are treating me and then left her alone at night i received a call where i was berated for being selfish for 20 minutes by her i asked her if she was done and asked if we could talk it out like adults she came over the next night and we had an exhausting fight screaming crying and after all was said and done she actually apologized for everything she said she was kind of jealous of my dress and of the wedding i almost had and she was embarrassed that she couldn't afford everything I could and that she felt like she failed as an adult and as a mother. And honestly, I get it. Not because I think she's a failure, but because I get how it feels if your brain tells you you failed at life because you don't have things that other people have. She apologized also because she was trying to blame me for her problems and that everything was easier if she wasn't the one to blame. We talked a lot more till I told her that she didn't need a fancy dress and that we could search for something basic and I could help her to decorate it with something. She agreed and we actually did get to customize a very basic gown. As we didn't have much time, it's not super fancy. Sadly, due to the outbreak, the wedding that was supposed to happen this month was cancelled. At a courthouse wedding where she wore one of my dresses and she is celebrating in August if it's possible. That's everything. So even if I was not an arsehole and my sister seemed like a brat, she was dealing with some heavy feelings and I still love her. Thanks for the judgment and advice. And whilst I still feel that the sister and the mum in this case were totally unreasonable, you know, cutting her off, blocking her like that and screaming at her. Opie's empathy in this one had the bloody onion ninjas come out and I was shedding a few tears in that one, I gotta admit. She seemed like an incredibly sweet person. But now I'm going to turn this one to you guys what do you guys make of this situation let me know your thoughts down in the comments below and let's move on to another story and before we do get into this next story i do want to give you a warning that there is talk of self-harm and emotional manipulation so if you do want to skip the story please feel free to do so timestamps are always down in the description and along the timeline below it's from a deleted user which says am i the asshole for shouting at my sister while she's on her deathbed. My 26 female sister Nancy, 39 female, and I have had a strained relationship for as long as I can remember. For a bit of background, Nancy's parents were my late aunt and uncle who passed away in a car accident when she was six and my parents adopted her. Growing up, I realized that she got more love and care than I did, but I just wrote it off because I didn't want to blame her for her trauma or how she handles triggers. When I was a teen, I got tired of her always needing to trump my accomplishments or be the center of attention. I finished high school when I was 16, and after I received my matric results, my parents planned a big party for me. But the week before, Nancy fell down a flight of stairs, and my party had to be cancelled. 
As I was sitting in the waiting room with my parents, I had an epiphany and realized that a lot of her accidents coincidentally happened when something big was planned for me. For example, a month before my 21st birthday, which was going to be spent on a cruise, she started having dizzy spells. A few days before, she fell off the roof as she was trying to patch a few leaks. Rightfully, I was upset and my parents lashed out at me for being selfish when my sister got injured trying to do something to help them. When I graduated with my MBA at 22, she's very sick after eating shellfish, which everyone knows she's deathly allergic to. The day after my partner proposed, she got into an accident while driving on a sunny day with great road conditions, saying that she didn't see a light pole or something. He threw me a surprise engagement party and guess who accidentally ate prawns and was rushed to the hospital halfway through the party. To avoid any drama at my wedding, my partner and I decided to elope with a few friends and it was the first time something was all about me for once. My parents were bitter about not being part of the wedding celebration so we planned a reception type thing for friends and family on our second anniversary. My dad will walk me down the aisle and my mum will, will do the something old thing etc. I've been buzzing with excitement and looking forward to the wedding. The event is this coming weekend and guests have already started flying in as they want to celebrate the whole week and treat it as a reunion of sorts. But like every other big moment in my life, I'm writing this post sitting in the hospital waiting room because Nancy apparently had a big psychotic break because her boyfriend dumped her in February. So there's a psychiatrist admitting her for 21 days as she believes she's a danger to herself. My parents are trying to talk to me into postponing because it would be heartless of me to celebrate while my sister is cuffed to a bed for the next three weeks. I had a meltdown of my own and told my sister that if she wanted to go to heaven that desperately, could she have not done it when we were younger so I could have been spared from all her drama? And now there's a handful of family members who are calling me a cruel bridezilla for taking my stress out on my sister when she's so unwell. I told all of them I'd be proceeding with a wedding as a lot of time and money had already gone into it and they are welcome to mope around the hospital to support my sister. They told me that I was unfair for making them have to choose between a party and my sister who is on her deathbed. ETA, I know she isn't in her deathbed. Any sane person reading this knows she is not on her deathbed. But to my family, this is a life or death situation because only God knows what they do to her in there. And they're especially incensed by the very limited visitation because... They are convinced that the psychiatrist is doing it so she can get pumped full of medication and so the hospital can make money, yada, yada, yada. And we'll start in the comments with Snoo who says, what a fantastic opportunity. She is locked up, safe and totally unable to create more drama. You should apologize to your parents and everyone who heard you explode. Say that the stress got to you because you know a lot of what you have done is non-refundable. You were very upset. After all, what can you do except continue? How are you going to stop it without losing thousands? Say that you don't want to cause your sister more distress now that she is on death's door. You must immediately tell her that you have cancelled the wedding. But everyone that she must not know that the wedding is actually happening and that you have told her that it has been cancelled so she can focus on her recovery and to spare her any guilt about not being unable to attend. Organize a big get well soon card and a basket for her signed by lots of her loved ones. You must also tell the medical staff about all the other episodes of self-harm and insist that she is there for the full 21 days. Express concern that her stay will be so short. Hopefully that will mean she can't get out on the big day. Your big challenge is going to be convincing your parents to get in on the deception, but it shouldn't be too hard to sell. Hope you respond to saying, I, I didn't think about it like this. You've just shown me the light at the end of the tunnel. Creative Kindness says hindsight is 2020, but I wish you would have called it right before any of these events. When I graduate, she will have some emergency. When we have our wedding, she will try to nab the attention somehow. They can't think this is all a coincidence. Plus, this is the reason you eloped in the first place. I don't know how they don't see it. Even speech says your sister is a drama queen and your parents are a flying monkey attendance. Deathbed, what the fuck? She's on psychiatric hold, which is a hardly a deathbed. Please go no contact with these people who knows what antics you will pull when you're in labor trying to deliver your first child. Not the asshole. Hope you responded saying, oh, I gave birth in March last year and, and that time she fainted in the delivery room and I got a smack from my dad for allowing her to see something so gruesome when I know she's fragile. Just typing that out made me laugh because it's so unfathomable. Todd says, okay, I think it's best if you just walk away and start living your best life. Your sister has issues she needs to deal with. She's currently seeking help for that. Try to remove yourself from involvement with her as much as possible and enjoy your own happiness. 
Possibly once she's begun to heal from her current situation, the two of you may be able to get some counseling together to mend your relationship. But right now, just take yourself out of the situation. She clearly has enough support from your parents for now. And one more comment from Fancy Ad who says, sounds awful of me to say, but could be a good time to have the party. She won't be eating shellfish or falling off of anything. She's being tended to by a bunch of mental health professionals. Sounds like a good time to have your party for yourself and your partner. Selfish, maybe, but it's okay to be sometimes. You have to realize that your life does not always revolve around her next incident, which sounds like it could be any time something good happens to you. Not the arsehole, in my opinion. Honestly, sounds like this needed to be brought up much sooner though. ETA visiting hours are limited at these places. It shouldn't be able to just sit there all day long. It also may do your sister some good to have the family be gone for a day and see that she's not the main character of every story ever told in the history of all. Celebrate your day. So OP does update their post and says, first, my sister tried to discharge herself by signing a refusal of hospital treatment, which wasn't successful and she apparently had a whole meltdown and hurt one of the staff members, so she had to be sedated and restrained. After I heard about this, I decided to call the psychiatrist up again and told him that this is part of her MO. She get hurt and then once she's gotten enough attention or something of mine has been cancelled, she'll then get herself discharged because she's miraculously feeling better. And I think that's what she's been banking on now. But what she didn't consider is that psychiatric hospitals operate very differently from regular hospitals. I also think she realized that for the first time, her plan wasn't working and I'd still be celebrating something and try to get out so she could physically disrupt the ceremony. But, oh well. The day after I made the post, I took the suggestion quite a few people made and created a whole spreadsheet of the incidents. I went through the discharge papers my parents still had at their house and went through a deep dive of my iCloud to find all pictures and stuff of special moments in my life and then compared all the dates. Lo and behold, there were 11 special moments and 10 discharge papers, all with eerily close dates, from a few years before my 16th birthday to now. I showed this list to my parents and nothing. They decided to stick to their guns, telling me that my sister has always been clumsy and the stress of big events would obviously make her more prone to getting hurt. I then asked them why she never had any accidents before or after her own milestones, like her graduation or her engagement party, and I didn't get an answer. I felt my heart break into a million pieces and decided to just cut my losses because I really was talking to walls. I then told him that I was okay with them not attending the wedding ceremony they had guilted me into having and that I had enough people who truly loved me there to support me. I also told the other flying monkeys in the family that they had my permission to stay away and go and sit in the hospital, waiting on someone who currently isn't allowed to have any visitors. I then switched my phone off so that I could focus on getting ready for Saturday, and all communication had to go through my partner, who was filtering out everything before it reached me. The ceremony started off great, and I actually don't regret doing it, even though I didn't want it in the first place. It felt so darn good to see relatives and friends I hadn't seen in a while. Halfway through, my parents arrived and my dad started talking to other relatives about how disappointing it was that he didn't get to walk me down the aisle a second time and how he didn't raise me to be so selfish by celebrating things while my own sister is probably chained to a bed with no one there to support her. My relatives then talked him into leaving and I didn't hear about his tantrum until this morning, which I'm grateful for. My relatives also had to deal with a friend of my sister's turning up to the reception in a white dress but the joke was on her because I was in a modern, traditional, a sotho dress, pronunciation, apologies, and I still fully stood out as the bride. Right now, I honestly just feel numb and defeated, and it feels like I've lost my family, even though they were never really family. It hurts to be in this situation, and part of me is mourning what could have been or what I deserved but never got. A lot of people told me that going no contact is never easy, and I think it's finally starting to sink in. But a lot of people also told me to focus on the good, I have a lot of things going for me now and I should be in the moment. This might not be the dramatic update people were expecting, but that's all there is for now. A few people asked me for a link to the inspo photo I used when getting my dress made. And then OP shared the picture of the inspiration for getting their dress made, which is this. But now I'm going to turn this one to you guys. What do you guys make of this situation? And just a huge thank you from the bottom of my heart for getting involved in today's stories, your love, your support, your time, as always, always means the world to me. So thank you so much for being involved and hopefully we'll see you in the next one. Take care. Much love.